Good morning. Um, so I am starting off with our admission senior checklist. Uh, my name is Tori and I'm from Shattern State College. So this is kind of where you guys should be at in our admissions, in our admissions process. So we have students honestly apply the day before school has started. Um, but that takes a lot of stress on you guys and us. So it's just easier to get ahead of the game. So let's begin. So what should you have done at this point? Hopefully you have started your applications. Um, I've had a lot of students ask if I apply to a school, does that mean that I will actually be attending the school? And no, that does not automatically force you to attend the school that you are applying to. So I definitely recommend applying to schools um, especially if you haven't yet. I highly recommend taking a campus visit at this point. Um, it's a great way to get a feel of the campus and see kind of what you actually like. I always highlight the fact that when you come to college, you will actually be living on our campus and communicating with our students and our faculty. So you should know kind of the feeling of the campus to see if it fits for you. You also should have contacted your admissions counselor. So I am an admissions counselor at CSC and most, almost all colleges have an admissions counselor position of some sort. So our entire job is to help you guys sort through this whole process, whether it's helping you with applications or answering any questions that you have, reminding you about deadlines, we are kind of your guide for this entire thing. So I definitely recommend reaching out to your admissions counselor and just starting that communication and creating that connection so that you have a helping hand. We are always there for you. Um, but if you do have questions, feel free to reach out. Then we also hope you have started your to-do list. At CSC, it is called our to-do list. Um, I, I'm guessing most colleges have some sort of to-do list for you to do, usually on their platform online. You can go through and it will say immunization records, fill out your scholarship application, um, all of that kind of in our timely process. So being able to go back to that to-do list, um, log in, see what else you have to accomplish, see if anything else has popped up on there, maybe an enrollment form, whatever else is coming up in the near months. I highly suggest that. Hopefully you have checked into your to-do list. If not, I would attempt to locate it by contacting your admissions counselor as well. I also hope you have started your housing applications. For CSC, we had a priority housing deadline, which was March 1st. It guaranteed our students a uh, essentially first call at some of our dorm rooms. So starting your housing application and getting that in uh, just takes one less thing off of that to-do list. And housing can be tricky, especially when you're housing a lot of students trying to pair all of the roommates. So the sooner that you can get it in, the sooner that our housing office can sort through it. Um, a lot of other things through admissions that you should have done at this point will also come into play with our financial aid and with our scholarships, but our other two presenters will be touching on that. So that is where you should be in the admissions process at this point. Um, again, Multiple schools have students apply the week before, but if you guys are on top of the ball, it will make everybody's lives a lot easier. Hey, Tori, um, this is RJ with Education Quest. Um, thanks for being here and, and sharing this information with, with Nebraska students and, and, and parents. So a lot of uh, 12th graders that, that I work with, you know, they might have concerns like is, it's March 2nd right now. Is it too late to, to reach out to admissions counselors? And even if maybe Shadron, for example, just popped up on the student's radar, uh, what should those first initial steps be to reach out to someone like yourself? Um, you should be able to find any admissions page on whatever school website that you're looking at. And you should be able to find your rep um, or your, your admissions counselor. It is sorted by kind of your territory. So we have an Eastern Nebraska rep, Northern Nebraska and a Southwest Nebraska. Um, and a lot of schools divide them up as that as well. So just kind of finding whatever rep, we're just reaching out to the admissions um, as a whole. For instance, if you email just CSC admissions here, we send it on to who it needs to be. So don't feel afraid to reach out. Um, I have had students that I didn't communicate with until 
August when they moved in August 12th. So it just kind of depends, um, but always feel comfortable enough to ask any questions. Even if a school is just newly on your radar, we should know it just to help you with multiple opportunities, whether you may have missed a scholarship deadline or anything like that. Thank you, Tori. All right, any other questions? No, I think I should be good to go. Perfect. And yeah, um, again, this is RJ with Education Quest. I uh, just want to make a quick plug to all you 12th graders out there. I know, you know, it's March 2nd. The weather's starting to get a little bit nicer, hopefully. If you have any questions on the college side of things, you know, we'd be happy to connect you with any of these uh, four year colleges or two year community colleges, trade schools, whatever you're thinking and feeling. Um, you know, Education Quest is here to help connect you with who you need to be talking to. Um, and one of the things that we love to talk about and, and discuss is financial aid. So TJ, if you wouldn't mind uh, bringing our colleague Mary Summers onto the screen and we can learn about financial aid. Good morning, everyone. Hopefully you should be seeing me shortly here, I think, but my name is Mary Summers. I'm the director of the Office of Financial Aid at the University of Nebraska at Kearney. And I just want to thank um, Education Quest, first of all, for hosting this, um, uh, this webinar today for all of us and all of you to connect. Um, we appreciate any opportunity we have to talk to students in Nebraska who are getting ready to go to college. So I'm grateful for that. Um, but also I think that um, a couple of things that are important to emphasize at this point in the senior year um, are even some things that Tori alluded to, but I'm gonna just kind of take a shot at him from the financial aid perspective. The first thing is you should not panic if you haven't yet done much of the financial aid process. And when I'm talking about financial aid right now, I'm really focusing on anything that has to do with need-based financial aid um, involving the completion of the FAFSA or the free application for federal student aid. That application is the starting point for any student who thinks they're gonna to need to access some types of financial aid to pay for college. Now, my colleague Luis, a little later on in this program is gonna talk about scholarships. So I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on scholarships. The biggest thing I wanna to emphasize to all of you today is if you, if you have been hesitating completing the FAFSA, maybe you've heard it's difficult or um, you feel like maybe you won't qualify for a lot of financial aid. Um, generally, my advice is do it at least once. And even if your family's done a lot of preparation to pay for college and you, you've got some financial resources in place, having the FAFSA done lets the institutions that you're considering um, give you information on alternative financing options. So it may be that you actually pay for college using a number of different resources and a financial aid program, maybe federal college work study or federal direct student loans would be one of those options to help you pay for college. So that's my first piece of advice. Now, where can you get help with the FAFSA if you need it? Education Quest is a great starting place. Their website even has a lot of great information about preparing um, to, to do the FAFSA um, that is available online. But if you need assistance and you prefer to have some one-on-one -on -one assistance, just about every financial aid office in the state of Nebraska will be happy to arrange even a, a socially distant um, appointment for you to get the FAFSA done. So my staff here in the financial aid office at UNK, we help students get FAFSAs done that probably aren't going to end up coming to UNK, but they're, they're Kearney residents maybe, and they feel comfortable working with us. We're happy to help them. Same thing with um, our Education Quest colleagues. You know, they're, they're nice because 
they're not affiliated with any college and they can be objective in helping you sort through things. So the, the biggest thing we would emphasize is do the FAFSA as soon as possible if you haven't. And remember, you can have the FAFSA sent to more than one school. So like Tori said, you don't have to be at the point where you've made a slam dunk decision about where you're gonna enroll. You can have the FAFSA sent to more than one school and get financial aid offers for more than one school, just like you can be admitted to more than one school. So, um, so don't hesitate to do the FAFSA because you think you need to wait until you pick your school. It's actually vice versa. Hey, Mary, um, this mm -hmm. is RJ with Education Quest again. Um, I've had a lot of students, uh, 12th graders, seniors that I've that I've worked with, and their concern is, is, is it too late to do FAFSA? I mean, you know, I know mm -hmm. that April 1st is kind of a, a big date in, in your world. Um, can you give us a little bit of, of insight on that? Yeah, you know, I, I, uh, it's not too late to do the FAFSA. It, it, not at all. And in fact, even legally, I mean, the way the federal government structured the FAFSA process, we'll have students wait um, maybe for, for all kinds of very logical and appropriate reasons and not do the FAFSA until the summer or maybe even when the semester starts because they've got fall semester paid for, it's spring semester they're worried about. So, so you can wait. However, um, for students that are looking at the University of Nebraska, we do have a program called the Nebraska Promise. And for Nebraska residents who um, are either eligible for the federal Pell Grant program or and or their families have um, incomes of 60,000 um, or less, you will qualify for this commitment, but you must complete the FAFSA to qualify. And we ask students complete the FAFSA by April 1st in order to be considered for the Nebraska Promise Program. And I know my many, many schools in Nebraska have similar commitments that if you demonstrate a certain level of need and apply by a certain date, you're gonna qualify for a special program. The Nebraska Promise Program guarantees that the financial aid award you will have will contain a combination of scholarships and grants that will cover up to 30 credit hours of tuition. So if you qualify for the Nebraska Promise, you have the assurance that as long as you get the FAFSA done by April 1st, chances are your financial aid award is gonna include that level of funding. Um, it is a very practical reality that the later you apply for financial aid, the less financial aid is available. And that's simply because a lot of institutions have limited funds and they're gonna prioritize people who apply early. That's, that's just kind of a standard practice in the business. And so some of the limited funds that an institution may have to help you um, may not be available if you apply in July or if you apply in August or September. So that's why we kind of emphasize in, um, in, in our, our world here in the University of Nebraska that by April 1 is kind of the key date. Thank you very much, Mary. And, and one last question, um, and, and I just wanna emphasize that, that need to hopefully now seniors get your FAFSA completed, utilize this month of March if you can, get that yeah. thing you know submitted, um, uh, especially if anyone's free reduced lunch and, and things mm -hmm. like that. Right. Um, now there was a question regarding, you know, with uh, sometimes with 2020 and all the disruptions and stuff, um, some of the, the parent concerns is that maybe the, the current money situation doesn't match what it was back, uh, you know, a year ago. Right. Um, any tips for, for helping with communicate some of those circumstances to a financial aid uh, office? RJ, that's a great question. Thanks. You were reading my mind because that's one of the things I wanted to make sure and emphasize today. Uh, yes, this is an incredibly challenging time for so many of our students and their families, um, even for my colleagues on campus um, here at UNK. So we know that students have often had their part-time jobs disrupted. Sometimes moms or dads have had periods of unemployment, or you've had illness in your family related to the pandemic or not that has cost um, money and the fact that the FAFSA takes a snapshot of the family's financial situation from a couple of years ago 
to determine eligibility can be just quite simply not a good, accurate representation of what's going on with your family economically. So schools have the authority to review those circumstances. In our business, we would call that a special circumstance request. Um, financial aid officers have legally been given the authority to do what's called professional judgment, which means that we can actually override some of the answers on the FAFSA in order to better represent a family's financial situation. Every school in, um, that I'm aware of in Nebraska has a process to do that. It generally is going to begin with you submitting a, some kind of a request. Now, at the University of Nebraska at Kearney, we, we publish that information on our website. We have a special circumstance form that's online that families can submit for an initial review that goes to a... Um, that goes to a um, individual counselor here in our financial aid office who reviews it and then follows up with the family to collect documents. So that's certainly um, one way a school will do it. Generally, you can either look at the institution's financial aid website for instructions on how to submit a special circumstance request, or you can call the financial aid office or email them and say, hey, this is going on. How can you help me with this? So what are the other, just, just don't hesitate to ask. That's the most important thing. But be prepared that if you ask, probably you're gonna to have to put together a little bit of documentation to explain your situation. Fantastic, Mary, that's, that's great information. And, and you heard it here, uh, seniors and parents of seniors, you know, don't be afraid to communicate with your financial aid offices at the colleges you're looking at and, uh, and uh, you know, have those conversations. Um, thank you very much, Mary. We'll, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, visit Luis Sotelo from Doan University out in Crete, Nebraska, and he's going to share a little bit of insight on scholarships. RJ, thank you for that introduction and thank you for inviting me. I'm excited to, to be here because I think scholarships are a wonderful opportunity to be able to uh, dedicate your college experience to focusing on your academics, um, engaging in those activities versus worrying about where am I going to find the money to pay for college. And I think that if students start with that frame of mind, it's a lot easier as you're working through your 30th um, application, uh, scholarship application, to keep motivated uh, to understand that it's it's that freedom that you're going to be able to have in college to focus on other things beyond uh, financing. So, um, so there are three steps that I recommend students to take when considering um, scholarships. The first step is identifying the scholarships you will apply to. Um, so there are many places where you can look. And in fact, Education Quest has some of the best resources I have seen in order to identify search engines to apply for those scholarships. So uh, Scholarship Quest uh, at Education Quest, and also within Scholarship Quest, if you scroll down, you're going to see national search engines. That's more or less a listing of scholarships that you can apply to uh, throughout the entire nation. And you may be thinking, ooh, applying to a national scholarship may, is, it sounds a little intimidating. I want to reassure you, as someone who has um, sat on some of these review committees for, for national scholarships, uh, there, there's plenty of opportunities for any student uh, to be able to win those scholarships. And in fact, millions and mil millions of dollars of scholarships go unawarded um, at the national level because students just simply do not apply. So, so do apply to those that you find on the search engine. Other places that you can look for scholarships are those that are sponsored by the university. So look at the websites of the colleges and universities that you're applying to, and you will find some resources there. Talk to your school counselor or college advisor for a list of scholarships that past graduates have won. And in fact, if they have won them, and especially if they're more selective scholarships, reach out to them. We're more connected than ever through social media. So you're able to um, reach out to those students who have won it and say, hey, how did you win the scholarship? What did you do? Um, looking through um, senior night programs is actually another excellent way to identify scholarships that you may be able to apply to and win. Go through those and you, you can often see, you know, what scholarship students in the past at your high school have won. 
look into community and national foundations, um, local and national service organizations and nonprofits like the Rotary, um, Optimist, etc. Um, look to your family and parent and guard, uh, guardian employers. They may have a scholarship uh, that, that you may be able to apply to. Private sector companies, for example, the Coca-Cola uh, company has a National Scholars uh, Foundation program that you can apply to. So look at private uh, sector as well. And then finally, look at the activities that you participate in. So for example, if you participate in you know, speech and debate, uh, there is a National Speech and Debate Association that may have scholarships for you as well. So all of those sources um, are the first place to, to start identifying what scholarships you should look into. The second step real quick is matching the profile your profile with the scholarships, right? So if it is a scholarship that is heavily athletic and you've only participated maybe in one sport, maybe your first year of high school and never again, that alignment is, is not going to be the best, right? Uh, however, let's say you've done a ton of community service and there's a scholarship that is all about community service. Those are the scholarships that you should apply to. And this seems to be a pretty simple step, but it is a step that I actually see many students um, not seeing, is they're not pairing themselves, aligning with their profile, what their strengths are, and the type of scholarship. And the first step, and then RJ, I invite you to, to ask me some questions here, is to focus on the writing process. Um, so there's definitely things that you can do um, to, to be successful there, from researching the prompt, the prompt meaning the question that is being asked, for the essays that many of these scholarships are asking for. So um, you wanna understand what is the question asking you? Why is that organization asking you that question? Um, and what is the purpose of that essay? Um, again, uh, many missed opportunities here if you aren't necessarily aware of, of what the organization is trying to glean from you. Um, so I will stop there, RJ, for, for you to, to, to ask me some questions. Oh, that's great information, Luis. Thank you. And, and you know, you who've, who've served on some of those scholarship committees, you know, that decide whether or not to advance a student's uh, scholarship application, what, uh, what kinds of, of insider or tips would you have that would help students uh, have their applications shine compared to the rest of the students? Definitely, RJ. Good question. So uh, bottom line, um, I, will, I, I will speak about more or less like the model student that is likely going to be winning more scholarships. Now, that doesn't mean that if you do not meet this profile, that you cannot win scholarships. But I'm just um, describing a, a quick profile of students who, who definitely increase their chances of, of winning scholarships. So um, scholarships are to be able to attend college. Uh, so they're obviously looking at academics. Uh, you know, how are you doing in, in school? They're looking at the extracurriculars. How are you involved in school and also within your community um, involvement? They're also looking at your, your, your vision and your dreams, right? Do you, you, know, do you wanna become a doctor? Why do you wanna become a doctor? Um, they're looking at your honors and awards. What have you been recognized for throughout your, your high school career? Um, so, so the more that you're able to, to um, grow in those areas, the higher chances that you're going to, to win those scholarships. Now, a little bit more specifically, there's three A's that I, that I talk about, um, and these are the three A's that, that you should also, um, you know, be inspired to hopefully use within your application um, essays, is authenticity. So, are you coming through, right? Or are you trying to be something else? Um, is it RJ um, on paper coming to life? Um, the, the, uh, the next thing I talk about is the advantage. Um, what, what is unique to you, right? So what, what advantage uh, do you have that is unique that separates you from uh, other students? And the third piece is the alignment. Again, going back to that, that alignment, um, if the scholarship is, is wanting to award students who are heavily involved in community service, are you aligning what you're talking about in your essays and really throughout your application to reflect that community service that you've done? Wow, that's, that's great insight, Luis. Um, you know, it's, it's March of senior year of high school for many students. Um, you know, does the scholarship process end once the student graduates from high school or should scholarships be just an ongoing part of their lives throughout college? 
if the student uh, won many, many scholarships and, and, and big scholarships, then perhaps they don't have to think about scholarships into the future. Now that is not always the case. So you do have the opportunity as a student, even as a first year student in college, to continue applying for scholarships. And really the timelines are, are all over the place. So it is hard to identify. Um, yes, you could say there's, there's a heavy wave in the fall and then a heavy wave in the spring. Um, but I have seen, you know, even some timelines that go into the summer. So again, wave, wave one in the fall, wave two, um, and that can really cycle throughout your entire um, collegiate experience, even at the graduate level. So even as you're moving into graduate, you know, master's, doctorate, there are still scholarships at that level. So absolutely. And you would use the same type of advice that I have given here to continue applying. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Luis Sotelo from Doan University. Um, so we're just about out of time, everybody. So I just want to say and emphasize, you know, now's the time. Admissions, applying for admission to, to one or to multiple schools, if you haven't already, seniors. Uh, financial aid, be sure to communicate with the financial aid offices at those colleges. And then scholarships, you know, now's the time. Uh, the next month here is going to be critical for that as well. Um, so again, reach out to the colleges and, and, and the many booths that are here today at the virtual college fair. This is a great opportunity, seniors, to have those conversations with the admissions uh, representatives. And then if you need help with the financial aid stuff, I mean, Education Quest is happy to, to set up a virtual appointment with you uh, and your parents to do the FAFSA application. Um, again, um, Mary Summers referenced April 1st is an important deadline for some of the, the University of Nebraska schools. Many other colleges will have similar deadlines. So please reach out to us, now's the time. Um, you don't have to be an expert in the college process, okay? You as a senior, you as a parent of the senior, we get that this stuff can be complicated, but we're here to help. If we can help connect you, clarify on any of this stuff, then we'd be happy to do so. EducationQuest.org, you can find the nearest uh, EducationQuest office. Uh, we have representative out in Scotts Bluff, Kearney, uh, Lincoln is our headquarters, and then Omaha. Uh, so again, we'll go ahead and end it there. Thank you all very much. Go out and visit those college booths, talk to those representatives. Thank you.